I had a couple of Jehovah's Witnesses come to my door yesterday. They're on the street. They're passing out flyers. They're having this big prophecy event. They want you to come down to their, their pagan kingdom hall and they want to preach to you how Jesus wasn't real. He, you know, he didn't really die. He didn't really rise. We don't have spirits. They've got, the JWs have all sorts of strange doctrines. They have no cross. They do not believe in the cross. They do not believe that Jesus was God. They do not believe it, that Jesus rose again. They say that He was just a spirit and He raised in the spirit. They do not believe that mankind, you and I, that men and women, that we have spirits. They don't believe that. They say we have no spirit. They don't believe in the Godhead. They don't have the Spirit. They don't have the Spirit. Yeah, amen. They've got a dead Spirit. They don't believe in the Godhead. They don't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They change the titles. They call it a divine power or, or, or a divine being. They don't believe in hell. They, they believe that Jesus was really Michael the archangel. Well, guess what? Michael was a created being. Right? The angels were created, human beings were created, and guess what? Jesus is God, He was not created. Right? So, all right, so what they're saying is, who died for your sin? Right? If Jesus was a created being and He's not God, then, well, then who paid for your sins? This is a big deal. This is a really big deal. I want you to understand this. Uh, I want to read a couple verses for you out of the New World Order translation. And these, these couple of guys, we got into it for a minute, and I told them they preached a false gospel. They were false witnesses. And I started telling them these things. All these things I just told you, I started, well, that's not true. We believe in the resurrection. And no sooner they get it out of their mouth, I said, yeah, you don't believe in the bodily resurrection. Oh, well, yeah. You know, it's like every point they, they were going, they were literally lying to me. They're standing there lying to me. I'll prove it to you out of your Bible. I said, I don't want to see anything out of your New World Order translation. You know, I don't want to see anything out of that trash. Oh, well, I'll even show you out of the King James. Yeah, they have their modified versions. They have their these marked up versions. And um, so, you know, in 1 Corinthians 15, why, why is it important that they don't believe in the cross? I left the flyer out of my truck, but they have a flyer showing Jesus on a torture stake. Not on a cross. The picture, he's literally tied to a stake, a pole, like, a, like a phone pole that looks like a stake. 1 Corinthians chapter 18, the Bible reads, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. He said, you are saved. Why? Because of the power of the cross. Because of what Jesus died buried, rose again. We have faith that He did those things, that He was able to come back to life, that He bodily rose just as we will one day. So in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18, the real Bible, right, it says that it's the preaching of the cross that we know that we are saved. Well, what does their funny version say? Listen to this. For the speech about the torture stake is foolishness. What? The speech about the torture stake? Are you kidding me? He says, to those that are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is God's power. They are being saved. You know how they trust that they're saved or that they are being saved? Well, as long as they put in the works. So that's why they're so passionate about going out, but they're so slow and dead in spirit when they do go out because they don't have the Spirit of God. They don't have the power of God. They don't have the power of the Bible behind them. Every single reference of the cross, it says torture stake. Genesis chapter 1. Here's an interesting one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. Listen and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's the Holy Spirit. You understand that the Godhead is taught in Genesis chapter 1. From the beginning, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Well, what do they say? God's active force was moving to and fro. They take away the Spirit of God. They take away the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. God's active force Listen, they teach some strange doctrine. You're in Hebrews chapter 1. I want you guys to see this one. This is very important. Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 8. Your Bible reads, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Why is this important? God is saying to the Son, Hey, Son, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Right? The Father is saying to the Son, Your God, your throne is forever and ever. It's everlasting. Your power that I give to you is forever. Right. Well, what do the Jehovah's Witnesses teach? Listen to this. God 
Is, is your throne forever and ever? They change it into a question. I'll read the whole verse. But with reference to the Son, quotes, God, is your throne forever and ever? And the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of righteousness? They change it into a question. God put a period. He said, hey, son, hey, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God. He says, God, your throne is forever. The Jehovah's Witness say, hey, son, is your throne forever? They take away the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. They flip it around. They make it a question. There's so many perversions in the New World Order translation, right? And this is the 1984 edition. There's a 2013 edition. It doesn't matter which one you use. There's a bunch of perversion all the way throughout it. Why do they have to keep changing it? Well, to keep up with the times, to keep up with their false, failed prophecies. You know, the Jehovah's Witnesses were started by a man named Charles Taze Russell. He was a Presbyterian. He was a Presbyterian that became a Seventh-day Adventist. He was following William Miller that predicted the, predicted the end of the world in 1844, and that failed. So uh, Charles Taze Russell and a couple of the Seventh-day Adventists started publishing a newspaper, and they had this brilliant idea. It wasn't 17, 1844, it was 74, right? So they took that point and said, everything was supposed to stop. We're going to move it up 30 years, and that's when it will all stop. Right? In fact, a quote from him, he preached the second coming of Jesus was invisible in 1874 and the start of the thousand year earthly reign would be in 1914. So this was the basis of his entire ministry. They were not started out as calling uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. They had all these names of Bible study groups and things like that which is why they want to come to your house and sit down and have a Bible study and take Jesus away from you and take hell away and take everlasting life and the resurrection. They want to take these doctrines out of the minds of people. And so they predicted that in 1914 that you would begin to see the reign of Christ visible. It was invisible in 1874 when they missed the mark also. Now listen, Charles Taze Russell was part of a satanic secret society. They were trying to establish these Zionistic wars so they could, uh, so they could instill the Antichrist. They could build the Antichrist kingdom and introduce the doctrines of Lucifer. Well, he died. The man that followed him up was a lawyer, Joseph Rutherford. And this guy predicted that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would resurrect in 1925. Uh, you kind of missed that one, didn't you? Where, where'd that happen, right? Uh, in 1975, he said, would likely be the beginning of Armageddon. And the end of the world was predicted by the, by the JWs, 1914, 1915, 1916, 1924, 1928, and it goes on. Because they know how foolish it is to keep setting these dates that don't exist. And they're just following after the footsteps of a bunch of pagans. I mean, these people work for the devil. They know what they're doing. They're intentionally misleading people. The Bible says they are false witnesses. They are false witnesses. You know, look, the Bible says when somebody brings another gospel, they should be accursed. They should be accursed. And that's what I told them. I didn't curse at them, but I told them, according to the Bible, they should be accursed. And that, you know, the Bible says that they are anathema. Wait, are you saying you don't love the lost? Wait, there's a difference between somebody coming to my door to preach a false gospel. I'm going to tell them that God said they are accursed for preaching the false gospel. And when I started hitting them with these facts yesterday, one of them was like, whoa, wait, really? Whoa. And of course, the, the elder one was like, whoa, oh, 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 he's scrambling, trying to keep up. You know what I mean? But the younger one, I pray there was a seed planted there because I rebuked them sharply. I wasn't rude, but I was strong on the fact right. that they're wrong. It's a, it's a dead gospel. There is no life with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And they don't even believe in the resurrection. They don't even believe in hell. And so if somebody comes to your door with that, hey, reject them. Don't bid them Godspeed. But now if you knock on somebody's door, and they say, well, you know, I'm, I'm Jehovah's Witness, but I'll listen. Hey, preach to them. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed.